Hey there, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, we're going to look at this circuit right here to figure out the voltages, the currents, and the impedances for all of the devices in the circuit. And we are going to take advantage of Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is going to say, which says that Vs is equal to Vr plus Vc. And we'll also take advantage of Kirchhoff's current law, which says that the source current is equal to the resistor current is equal to the capacitor current. And this is because these components are all in series. There's only one path for the current to take. We'll also take advantage of the AC version of Ohm's law, which says that the voltage is equal to the current times the impedance. To start, let's figure out these impedances. And these are fairly simple to figure out because the impedance for a resistor is simply the real part of the resistance and no imaginary part. And in polar notation, that's 5 ohms with a phase angle of 0 degrees. For the capacitor, also very easy. There is no real part. It's all imaginary. And the imaginary part is equal to the reactance, which is based on the capacitance as well as the frequency. So that Xc, that reactance of the capacitor, is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance. And if we plug these numbers into a calculator, we get 26.526 ohms. So that means that, well, that's the reactance. So that means that the impedance is 0 plus, actually, it's minus, isn't it? And this should be minus. J 26.526 ohms, which is equal to, in polar notation, 26.526 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. The total impedance will simply be the sum of those two because these components are in series with each other, so it's going to be ZR plus ZC, so that's 5 plus J0 plus 0 minus J26.526. So the real parts add, the imaginary parts add, and we end up with 5 minus J26.526 ohms. And in polar notation, Now let's transfer these values over to this table I have here. So the next thing to calculate is the current in the circuit. And since everything is in series, the current's going to be the same from the source as it is through the resistor as it is through the capacitor. And it's going to be equal to the total source voltage divided by that total impedance. So we can just call it I. We don't need a subscript here because it's the same current for everything. The total voltage over total impedance, which is that 10 volts with a phase angle of zero. And of course, remember, dividing is always easier to do when you're in polar notation over this total impedance. And when we're doing this division, it's the magnitude parts are divided and the numerator angle is subtracted from the denominator angle. So that is the current for all three of those components. And of course, I can do this number in rectangular coordinates as well. And if I plug that into a calculator, I get... Okay, now that I have the current through the circuit, I can figure out the voltage across these two components using that AC equivalent of Ohm's law, the current times the impedance. So that voltage... Oh, it said Vs here. This should be Vr. What a silly man I am. That Vr is equal to the current times the impedance of the resistor. And again, doing a multiplication is going to be much easier when the numbers are in polar notation. So I can take this value. So there's my current. Multiply it by the impedance of the resistor. All right. And again... I can convert this from the polar notation into the rectangular notation. And so that'll be, plug these numbers into a calculator and I get 
Now let's move this number over to my table here. And as expected, the phase angle of the voltage across the resistor is same as the, as the phase angle of the current through the resistor. There is no phase shift between voltage and current in a resistor. Uh, let's do the voltage across the capacitor next. I think that's the last thing we need to figure out because we actually know what the source voltage is. That's, of course, 10 volts, angle zero degrees. Again, apply that AC equivalent of Ohm's law. So when I multiply these out, I multiply the magnitudes and I add the phase angles. And I can convert to rectangular notation. And that's 9.6569 minus J 1.8203 volts. So I hope this helps with your understanding of analyzing AC circuits. And you can find this example problem on a free online open source textbook. The links are in the description. And there you can find examples like this, as well as the background theory for helping you understand how to analyze circuits like this. It covers AC circuits, DC circuits, and maybe, if you're lucky, by the time you're watching this video, even electronic circuits. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.